Hello everyone, so great to be here, uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope you get at least one insight, interesting insight from this session. Uh, today we're going to talk about its insights in the fintech as a data science product manager. Uh, I don't need to, <laughs> to present myself because you already did that. But I think it's important for you to understand that I have a strong technical background. Uh, I have a lot of experience with data. Uh, this is uh, my real passion. And in the last six years, uh, I'm working as a product manager. And today I'm a, product, I'm a lead data science product manager at PayPal. And my job there is to uh, find solutions to help prevent fraud from even entering our systems. So let's talk about the agenda for today. I'm going to tell you some facts on PayPal in the fintech world. Not that I don't, I don't think that you know already what is PayPal and what they do, but I do want you to see how much data we have and how much um, I'm facing every day. We'll have a deep dive to the world of a data science product manager in the fintech environment. And I will present a use case from my world, uh, just to give you a sense of what, it, what does it mean to be a data science product manager. And I will give you three key takeaways uh, for those of you are, that are product managers, or I think it will be helpful for each and every one of you. Okay, so let's start. Uh, some facts about PayPal. Uh, I'm sure you're probably some of you are using it. Some of you are active users. Uh, I guess all of you heard about it. Uh, our active accounts, over 400 million active users. Total payment volume of about $1.5 trillion. About $30 billion in revenue. Net profit of about $4 billion. And market presentation accepted by about 70% of the top 1,000 online retailers. So that's, as you can see, it's a lot of data that we're facing every day in our systems. And I need to make the solutions that are based on those data and make some in interesting insights based on all of the data that, ha that is in our systems. Okay, so let's deep dive to the work of a data science product manager. I assume everyone here knows the role of a product manager, right? You, you're all working with them. Some of you are product managers. And you're familiar with it. The product manager is responsible for the product, right? From end to end. They're responsible for uh, knowing their users, knowing their pain points, and know everything about uh, new features, uh, prioritize them and make APIs and, and deliver the product. So what is this new feature that calls data science product manager? So in today's world, all organizations are data driven, right? We all have data, uh, especially PayPal with all their data. The, pro the data science product manager is, is basically a bridge between business, data, and technology. They need to know and be familiar with the business goals. They need to understand them and get inside the data, make important insights, be familiar with it, be the owner of the data, and then make the features and implement them through the technology. What are the responsibilities? So, they need to have the strategic of the company, right? They need to know what the goals, where, where are we headed? And then by knowing all of that, who are their customers? They're not the customers of a, a product manager, right? The product manager has a, an end customer that they're, they're uh, if we're talking about PayPal, so the end customer is the, the one that's making the payment, the transaction, but the end, user for the data science product manager is actually someone from the inside of the teams. And they need to understand their pain points, their needs, uh, what are they trying to solve. They need to collaborate with other teams because 
the solution is usually not in, in the hands of a one team. They need to understand what models do they need to implement. What is the, the solution we look like? And then when they have the solution, they need to tell the story behind the data. They need to make insights and make everyone in the company, the management layer, uh, the data scientist, uh, the business layer, everyone needs to know what are the insights that are derived from the data. And they also need to, uh, to make KPIs, right? In order to understand if we're uh, uh, standing behind the numbers, we need to know what we were trying to get. And the project doesn't end there, right? Because we're, we're living in a dynamic world. And projects keep evolving. Models need to be refreshed. And solution can stand by its own. It needs to keep on updating and improving. OK, let's talk about a real use case for my work. Uh, I'm a product manager. I need to prevent fraud from happening in PayPal. What do I do? I have a request for a new feature to prevent fraud. What are the needs? The needs to consolidate bad indication into central location. OK, so now I'm asking myself, what is the problem? Who are my users and what are their pain points? So let's understand. My users are the decision makers that need to implement their strategic in order to prevent fraud. And they're telling me that they need to, to go to each team and understand their solution, understand the structure, understand on which environment they are working, and then try to adopt the solution and implement it on their systems. And they're saying that's hard. And my job is to consolidate all the solution into one structure, one place that they will have all the data in front of them. OK, so now I knew what, what I needed to do. The next thing that I wanted was the open communication with my customers. I needed them to, be, to, be, to allow themselves to ask me questions. And I needed to know that I can have daily meetings and get all the information that I need from them. I had several challenges do, during the, the, the solution. First one, data limitation. What are the data limitations that I faced? The data was all over the place. Different teams, different databases, different platforms. I needed to consolidate all those things into one place, into one structure. Second thing, user experience. There is always this tension between wanting to have a frictionless experience uh, to the good user, right? We don't want them to wait too long. We don't want to them to have a, a extra a authentication. And on the other hand, we want to prevent fraudsters from getting in. The third thing is feature costs. And I needed to ask, what is the price of implementing this a new solution, and what is the price if I won't implement it? How are my users going to handle themselves without this, and how are my end users will be if I won't uh, implement it? The fourth thing, and the last one, is the dynamic environment. I needed to keep uh, myself reminded that the, the dynamic, the, the environment, is, is dynamic, and I can't implement a solution that is static. I need to know how to uh, an answer fraud trends that are happening at this moment, and my solution needed to include them also. So you probably think that from now on it was a smooth sailing, the project went excellent, everything went okay. So let me tell you, 
It wasn't. At the end of the, of the, end of the solution, we found out that the models took too long to run. We had a great project. We answered all the questions. We tackled all the things. But it, it took too long. So we had several options to, to choose. And the first one was implement it as it is. And, and a daily process that was supposed to run will not run daily, will run once every three days. But, and, then, and then we could uh, productize and everything was okay. But the, the disadvantage was that they wouldn't get a refresh data, right? Instead of getting the refresh data every day, they will get it every three days. And by consulting our users, we decided not to go in this way. The second option that, that we had was reducing the time that we look back. Let's say we look back three years. We can look back only one year and reduce the time that our model takes. And then we could prioritize in the, in the same time and everything was okay. But the solution will not be perfect, right? Because we had other data that we're not using. And also here, together with our customers, we decided it is not good enough. The third option that we chose together with our customers is to uh, postpone our project, postpone our solution, and tackle the performance issue and reduce the times so it will fit the daily uh, process uh, as demanded. And we had an MVP and the reason that why we had an MVP was we wanted to see if the users will adopt the solution. Once we saw that the solution was adopted and was successful, then, only then, we continued increasing our efforts and updating the solution and giving it more features and more capabilities. Okay, now I'll talk about the uh, three takeaways. From my experience, they are really important, and I'm, I'm not talking only about uh, product managers, yes? I think everyone in their own position can take at least one of them. First one, know your data and understand the process to generate it. Second, raise hypotheses and use the data to validate them. Third, know how to talk about the data and explain the story behind it. Now let's deep dive to each and every one of them. Know your data and understand the process to generate it. When you are a data science product manager, you need to own the data. You need to understand what are the processes that generate the data. What is the refresh time? Uh, where is the data lazing? Is it uh, uh, one database, two databases, uh, are all in the same platform? Uh, what is the refresh time of the table? Um, you need to know every, everything. What variables are available? What variables do you need to expose? Um, and potential is issues with data quality or completeness. So that's really important. And when I say know your data, I really mean get your hands dirty. And in my case, I'm opening a notebook. In your case, it could be every application that you have to query tables. And I'm just opening and query tables and joining them and understanding the full picture. Now, not everyone are familiar with the data, so don't be shy. There are online uh, courses. You can ask other teammates. You have data science team. You have the developers. You can help, they can help you understand the data. And I really think it's, this is the key to, to be the owner of your data. The second thing, raise hypotheses and use the data for validation. So once you have the basis and you know your data, you can now raise hypotheses 
to fill the needs of the business, right? Uh, raise assumptions based on the data, and, and exp um, you can uh, test them, run models with the uh, hypothesis, and run models without them. See which one gives you better results. Make data-driven decisions based on your data. that. Okay, I will continue uh, while I uh, will uh, handle this. The third thing that I wanted to um, share with you, the, uh, three take the third takeaway, is that you need to know the story behind the data. And in my experience, this is the most important thing. I'm sorry I don't have the presentation to show that. Um, but this is the most important thing, because there's, there are a lot of people that uh, are familiar with the data. And there are a lot of people that are familiar with the business goals. And, but there isn't a person that knows how to connect all the dots and make a story behind it. Okay, so as a data science product manager, you need to be able to tell the insights behind the data. It's not a hunch, it's not an assumption, it's not anything. It's the data that is talking and telling the story behind uh, the numbers. Okay, so when you get everyone excited about your idea, when you get the management teams to understand that those are the goals uh, of the company, and this data is the basics of what, oh, there's the presentation, and the data is the basic for your assumptions, then you get everyone excited about your solution. You get the management team backing you up. You get the developers, want to do the solution for you because they're all gather around the story that you 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 told and you're you're explaining the user journey right uh, you're telling you're telling what the, the pain points of the of the user you're telling what uh, the solution that you are trying to to fix and um, and you're really telling them all based on the numbers and the data now you can use whichever tool that is available to you and that you have in your toolkit. Uh, you can use presentations, you can use graphs, you can use pie chart, uh, you, can, you can use whatever visualization tool that you have in order to explain people and tell people the story behind it. Okay. Uh, I'll summarize what we went through. And I told you a little bit about the data science product man manager responsibilities. I talked to you about a use case from my work. And there are three takeaways that I believe uh, will benefit each and every one of you. Um, know your data, raise hypotheses, and tell the story behind the data. Those three takeaways will help you uh, especially in the environment that we live in today, a data-driven environment where you can't tell things by a hunch, you can't tell things just for, from assumption. You need to base your thing with the data, with the things that are available for you. And all the things are inside your company. You don't need to go out and uh, look for them. All the data is inside your company and enrich uh, with a simple uh, notebook, a simple uh, query tool uh, that is available for you in your company. So that was my session.
Uh, thank you all for participating in it. I, I really hope that uh, you got something uh, from this session. Um, you can ask questions if you have, uh, or if you prefer, we can, uh, yes.